24 February 2022, the first day of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. While much of the fighting occurred on land, the Russian Navy also attacked Snake Island, a Ukrainian island in the Black Sea. A small garrison of Ukrainian border guards and marines were stationed on the island. The Russian cruiser Moskva, the flagship of the Russian Black Sea Fleet, escorted by patrol vessel Vasily Baikov, demanded the island's surrender via radio. The Ukrainian border guard replied. This response was highly publicized and rallied the entire nation against the Russian invasion. The Russian warship bombarded the island. Then, Russian naval infantry landed on the island and took control. Russian Defense Ministry would publish a post saying, Never make a Russian warship angry. Having lost contact with the island, Ukraine initially thought that their soldiers had lost their lives, but later confirmed that they were taken prisoners. The following day, a squadron of Ukrainian Navy boats attacked the Russian vessels off Snake Island. But this attack failed and Russia claims that they have sunk six Ukrainian boats. I would take everything Russia says with a grain of salt. On 14th of April, Ukraine launched another counterattack, firing Neptune anti-ship missiles off the coast of southern Odessa. Ukraine struck and sunk in Moskva. Although Russia claims the ship sunk due to a fire causing an ammunition explosion, Russian warships are redeployed further away from the Ukrainian coast. Russia also retaliated by bombing Ukraine's missile factory. Details remain classified, but it was believed that US intelligence provided targeting data to the Ukrainian military. The sinking of the Moskva created an air defense gap in the Black Sea. And given the distance of Snake Island from Russian air bases in Crimea, the Russian Air Force could not readily defend Snake Island against Ukraine. Starting from 26 of April, Ukrainian forces bombarded Russian forces occupying Snake Island with airstrikes and artillery. The lack of air defense capability surrounding Snake Island made resupplying the island incredibly difficult as Russian boats are constantly under Ukrainian attack. Russia continues moving equipment and personnel to Snake Island despite failing to establish air superiority. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. Ukrainian attacks on Russian-occupied Snake Island continued for months. On 17th of June, a Russian tugboat delivering supplies, weapons, and personnel to Snake Island was sunk by two Ukrainian Harpoon missiles. Three days later, Ukraine also struck gas platforms near Snake Island, where Russian forces had deployed radio jamming equipment. Russia claims they have intercepted all incoming rounds, destroyed 13 drones, and repelled an amphibious attack, but provided no evidence. The Russian Air Force would attack Ukrainian artillery positions in Odessa, hoping to reduce the intensity of Ukrainian attacks on Snake Island. These attacks caused no casualties or damage according to Ukraine. Given that Russian missiles have a failure rate of 60%, I'm not too surprised. On 29th of June, Russia sent four helicopters to Snake Island to rescue Russian soldiers and at least one Russian helicopter was intercepted by Ukraine. On 30th of June, Russian forces retreated from Snake Island and the island was recaptured by Ukrainian forces. Russia claims their soldiers had completed their assignments and the withdrawal is a goodwill gesture. If getting bombed was part of their assignment, the Russians did pretty well. It seems that Russia has decided that occupying Snake Island is simply not worth the trouble. Ukraine, on the other hand, has suffered minimal casualties retaking Snake Island. <laughs> <laughs>